In this video, we'll dig deeper into what those differences between Swift and Objective-C are. First, in Objective-C, semicolons are required. Many languages today have semicolons required. Swift eliminates this need. The only time you actually need a semicolon is when you have two statements on the same physical line. In Objective-C, types must be declared explicitly. You can't define a variable without giving it a strict type. And that's a little different in Swift. You actually have type inference where the compiler can figure out from the context what type the variable is. Header files. Header files in Objective-C and C are clumsy and bulky, and there's really no need for them. Swift removes that need. Objective-C is dealing with pointers when variables are initialized. They're typically initialized to nil because they're a pointer. And this can always cause problems at runtime if those variables are not properly initialized after the class instantiates. In Objective-C, when you wanted to monitor a class or watch certain values within your class to see when they get changed, you'd either have to use key value observation or write your own custom setters to trap those events and work within those. Swift provides other mechanisms more simply to watch and observe values and trigger events after those happen. And then finally, alloc and init. Gone, goodbye. You won't have to double square bracket every initialization call that you make in Objective-C today. So for Swift, all types are inferred. You can explicitly define the type of a constant or a variable, but the compiler will use context and figure it out. In Swift, functions are first-class objects. So this is a major switch from Objective-C. And in here, it gives us the power of other languages such as JavaScript, where functions are first-class objects and can be returned from other functions. Collections in Swift, such as arrays or dictionaries that you're so used to dealing with in Objective-C as NSArray or NSMutableArray or NSDictionary and the mutable version, those collections are all strongly typed using generics in Swift. So while you can't just stuff an array full of all different objects, you get the power of generics within Swift. Swift provides simpler string manipulation functions and abilities. Under Objective-C, you used to have to use clumsy formatter functions of an string, and it wasn't really easy to format a string either. A much cleaner syntax has been put into Swift and also drops the need for things like string with format, the class function on NSString. And finally, one other element, and you'll see a lot of these, this is just one example, where switch statements no longer require the break statement. Instead, they use an alternate mechanism where you apply fall through if you actually want the next case statements evaluated. The default is it will not continue to fall through like it does in C. There are a lot of elements in Swift that seek to eliminate clumsy, time-consuming elements that are in a lot of other languages. And this is just one of those examples. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of some of the further differences between Swift and Objective-C.